boys. Welcome back to the Josh Dixon Show. I'm Josh Dixon, and again, I'm joined by the same Motley crew. Everybody, why don't you uh, introduce yourselves, tell me who you are and what you do. I'm Dan. I'm a college professor and also a writer. I'm Michael. I like watching movies and literally nothing else. I'm Trevor, and I'm a pr programmer by trade, but I also love video games and movies by night. And as I said, I'm Josh Dixon. I am a freelance filmmaker, and also uh, movies and video games are kind of my bread and butter during my free time. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing um, our picks for uh, favorite movie remake. So I was kind of talking to them earlier about if this is if there's a we need to differentiate reboot and remake. It's kind of a mix, but um, Anybody want to do this one first in terms of on the tip of your tongue, if you have any remakes in mind? Well, I just, I, I could chime in a little bit with a little bit of the clarifications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am defining a remake as uh, doing the same story over again, rather than necessarily the same character. So I, for mine, I did not include like James Bond or Batman or Spider-Man. Whereas and all I stuff. would feel those are more reboots than doing the same story again. Uh, I'm going to have a hard time bleeding into them a little bit. I made a list of like seven <laughs> because I'm probably going to go into reboot on accident, but I got I got a couple. I picked one. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, why don't you go first then? All right. So uh, I was going to start with, um, this is not my favorite remake. Um, I have a favorite remake. I may or may not talk about it. Uh but I think that the perfect example for why to do a good remake would be Dune. Oh, that was, that was that on was my a list. Good one. It's so, a good remake. It's a good remake. That's so, a, okay. I, I was confused about that because I thought I, I was like, I didn't know we were doing remakes of a book and not a movie because it's no, there's an old movie. No, it's a movie. Dune? An original movie? Yeah. No, Dune. I know, but they're not remaking the movie. They're yeah, they are doing a new adaptation of the book. I was well, counting that. Okay. I mean, there's right. yeah, that's gonna be hard to kind of well, get the weeds of that. I thought it was the same story. Like they chose to go different routes in it, but it's largely like the major plot points are the same. I never saw the original, but from what I saw, it's basically the sort of same thing, right? Yeah. Roughly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason that I chose Dune is I think that it encapsulates exactly what a remake should be. Um, and I'll sort of talk about what a remake shouldn't be. <laughs> um, <laughs> recently, there have been talks about remaking relatively new properties. Um, time of recording in 2023, there is talk of rebooting um, or of redoing Lord of the Rings, redoing... redoing the Harry, Harry Potter, Potter series. Yeah. Now I look at those and Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter are about 20 years old, but as adaptations, oh. the, the, the versions, the, the Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings and the, the Warner brothers, uh, Harry Potter's still relatively hold up. Um, so I think those are not properties that really need a remake um, yet. I think that those properties could use a remake maybe in another 10, 20 years. Where Dune comes in, so the the David Lynch Dune was um, in the 1980s. Oh, sorry. It was not particularly well received. It's a great book, though. Um, it's, it's one of the classics of sci-fi literature. In fact, it really brought the sort of subgenre of political sci-fi and fantasy to the fore um mm -hmm. for everybody who saw the 2021 dune you realized oh wait this is season one of game of thrones in space um that you know that uh oscar isaac's character in the 2021 dune is basically ned stark um and it's it's very clearly um, an inspiration for lots of sci-fi and fantasy uh, that have come since then. So the reason that I think Dune is a good remake is that you're going to do something that either wasn't done well the last time or significantly improve upon it. Uh, with Dune, and time of recording, Dune Part 2 has not come out yet, but um, I'm eagerly awaiting it and I hope it doesn't stink. 
Um, but Dune part one, anyway, I think it really does um, justice to the source material. Now, I have, I read Dune, the, the novel, uh, I read it a few months before the, uh, the Denis Villeneuve version uh, came out. So it's not something I grew up with, but it is something that I was familiar with before I saw the film. It, the Denis Villeneuve version really does a good job with the novel. The novel is a very hard novel to adapt, partly because it is, uh, it has an omniscient narrator, and this is not very common in sci-fi and fantasy. The omniscient narrator means that the, the narrator is in all of the characters' heads at the same time. So you know what both the heroes and the villains are, are thinking from the very beginning, and you're constantly in everybody's heads. That's very hard to film. Um, I think that Denis Villeneuve did a good job with it, though, uh, by choosing what to adapt and what not to adapt. Um, but beyond that, they had the budget. So, yeah. you know, you can do good acting. You know, there there's good acting 100 years ago. But there's not always good special effects. Um, and I think special effects don't make a great movie. But to do um, special effects and production design, um, so not just the, you know, not just the computer generated spaceships, but also um, making Arrakis really feel lived on and lived in. Uh, I think that Denny Villeneuve did a great job with that. Um, it felt like Dune. The opening frames where you just hear this sort of guttural noise groaning. And I was like, I'm in. I'm sold. Yep. Yep. Uh, so you. what I think it did well was it, it was able to do something that the 80s version couldn't do, which was the technology. Um, it was going to do it in a higher quality than the 80s version did. Um, and then also, Dune is a very thick book, so I'm glad they took two movies to do it. Um, the the 1980s version does the whole book, whereas the Denis Villeneuve version just does the first half, and then the second half is coming out um, in uh, fall 2023. So that's my pick. And I, what you said about visual effects, I agree with. Uh, it's not all about visual effects, but when the visual effects are distractingly bad, yes, and it like makes you think about the effects rather than what's happening, that's a good a good reason to update it, basically. And I think I that's a that is a reason why Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings don't quite need one yet. Exactly, is because that 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 the the special effects for Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter are dated, but they don't look terrible for twenty years old. Yeah, Sorcerer's Stone was two thousand one, and then Deathly Hallows Part Two, which I guess was the point you'd really focus on, was uh, twelve years ago. So, it's time flies, man. Yeah, it's yeah. weird because I would say the original Dune movie, the the special effects were good. And if it was a let, like the thing with uh, just saying like we should reboot it is like, uh, if it was a lesser director than Denise Villeneuve, I think it would have been just as bad because like you know if you had just put in a bunch of CGI, agree. yeah, and like like um the uh, original RoboCop versus the the remake where oh yeah the special yeah. If, like they have CGI special effects. But the application of special effects comes hugely into play and in how they're integrated with the story. So like you still, one... you still have to stick the landing and make a good movie, regardless of yeah. the other technology. Well, the hardest part I've had with this topic is that every remake I thought of, one I didn't care for and was just kind of bad. So it's actually really hard to find remakes that are done necessarily and are good. I, I think Michael brings up a very good point is that if the writing and the directing is not there, the special effects won't do it. Right. Um, yeah. And I think that Dune was also very well, well adapted. Um, the first or the, um, the 2021 version. I have not seen the, the 1980s version or the miniseries all the way through. So I can't really comment on how well it was adapted. All I know is that it was poorly received. Um, whereas the 2021 version, I mean, Oscars are Oscars. So it got nominated for Oscars, but also like it was really well adapted. My sister's not a movie person, and she told me yesterday that she saw Dune and was looking forward to the, the next one. So, like, 
apparently it struck a chord with regular people. It made it made decent money even in 2021 when um uh theaters were not quite all the way open Streaming uh, was a yeah and thing. it came out day and date and it still made about 100 million at the box office um compared to like suicide squad which came out that same year from the same um studio and made half that was that the good suicide squad or the bad suicide squad the good suicide squad okay oh it's interesting hard. it's like yeah. impossible to remember which one has a the i don't remember <laughs> the james gunn one has the 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 okay the the one is the good one yeah the suit okay i'll go next because i want to answer your question josh which is like what should be adapted and what shouldn't and i feel like movies that like don't need ad- adaptations are something like robocop where the reason for doing it is beyond me because it all the stuff that it was trying to do it very effectively did um so yeah. like there's uh like the old- cast crab is probably reason for well no I, I, there's always a studio reason but i mean like we're just talking about like i ideally like what's the artistic version or reason for, for adapting something yeah. um because like yeah you you could explain away why is any movie made well it's they thought they would make money money yeah. like for the worst decisions ever uh but like old boy don't adapt that they, oh yeah you, you can't do it better than that um probably no one should remake like silence of the lambs uh especially because those movies don't rely on visual effects so there's not really a a technological reason oh well yeah there is that um i'm excited for the kill bill reboot that's gonna be be awesome (laughs) don't yeah don't do that (laughs) uh because well and also i think there's some things that it's like you could technically translate the effects better uh so kill bill you know, in, in 20 years, I'm sure someone is going to come up with that idea. Like, let's redo that. But like the, some of the effects you like, you like the movie because the effects aren't perfect. It was done on purpose. It's someone's like vision. Yeah. And in a lot of cases, I prefer the 1970s puppets to all the CG stuff that Lucas added later. Yeah. Yes, right. exactly. Blinking except for the, walks. except for the best scene in any of the movies, which is the, uh, the dancing uh, stripper alien. Oh yeah, Return, oh, of, in Return of the Jedi. That was the musical strange. number. That is so uncomfortable. <laughs> Everyone's still is uncomfortable favorite. today. It's weird. Um, but what I think should be remade is like movies that had a lot of like interesting things, like probably cult classics that lacked the budget or you know the the technical know how to do. We were texting and I I mentioned Blackula, uh, which I think people were. There was a reboot, or not a a, a a remake. They were talking about. I don't know what happened, but that movie. It's so it well. It was like a minimal budget. You can talk about the special effects being bad because even for the time, <laughs> they weren't good. What What are you calling this movie? Blackula. I've never heard of this movie ever. Uh, guess what it's about. Dracula. Yeah, it's a I, black, it's that's black, black Dracula. It's a black yeah. Dracula. But yeah, it sounds movie. to me like it's a black exploitation Dracula film. It's a black exploitation film. Uh, when did this come out? A, um, 1972. Okay. Yeah, it's it. The opening scene is in eight, 1880, whenever the book takes place, and an African prince is visiting visiting Dracula, and Dracula like bites him. And he's like, "I'm going. To, you're going to be cursed now." And he wakes up in the 70s. And goes around, and they don't do a lot with that premise, but that's a fantastic premise. This African prince from the eight, 1880s wakes up in the 1970s. That's a do anything. That's a great premise. Um, so, in 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 your theory craft, would it be would it would you change the tone at all, or would you just make a black exploitation film again? Oh, it would, kind of like uh, Dolomite. Is I mean, my name, I or... wouldn't. Well, I know you would, would, but I mean, like, would you suggest? So, like, say the guy who did the Eddie Murphy Dolomite is my name, which is sort of a a a modern day black exploitation film. Say he did Blackula, you'd be down with that. Yeah, but like, double down on it. Like, you know, have the feel of Black Dynamite more than the original film. Like, have that kind of music and stuff. But like, the that movie took itself kind of too seriously. Uh, so like, have fun with the premise more. So, what is your good remake though? So mine is Suspiria, which was 
Fury. The original. Do you, also, never heard of it. <clears throat> so the original one. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. No. Wait, the new one or the original? The new one. I thought it was a complete waste of time. How do we spell this? S U S P I R I A. Oh, okay. 2018. Yeah, the original is like. Kind I gave of a it a one classic. star review. Why? I thought it was terrible. What was terrible about it? Nothing happened until everything happened, and it wasn't interesting. <laughs> You're so... I can't believe how wrong... The only thing I thought that was interesting about it was the, the throwback aesthetic. Well, it's it's an interesting one, because the original movie, it's a little bit... It's pretty much unex, inaccessible to, like, mo to your average moviegoer, uh, because... Um, Dario Argento he's an Italian filmmaker so it has all the hallmarks of like I think it's 60s or 70s is when it's from but it has all those hall hallmarks of like ter the audio is just really jarring and he has a bunch of like garish lights so like when anything horrifying is happening there's just this red light that's like all over the place um, the and the, uh, the score Trevor you would actually like the score but the new, like that kind of movie, I think Dario Argento in particular, like you could remake a lot of his movies. Uh, I would love, I would love to see a remake of um, the one with Jennifer Connelly, um, where she controls bugs with her mind. I mean, that would be. I don't know what these Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. Oh, what is it called? Fuck. I don't remember. Anyway, I can search Jennifer Connelly bug mind control <laughs> yeah it'll come up it'll come up um yeah suspiria it's they understood what the original movie was about and they took the concepts that were in there that were just kind phenomena? of like, phenomena phenomena yes that should absolutely be remade uh that that's begging for a remake because it's it's held back by the budget and by the appeal, like who would this appeal to? Um, I guess I don't know. Was the, uh, but also I, I don't know how much how how well the new Suspiria movie did. I it it did terribly. I will say this much for it. It very clearly was the was an expertly crafted film, and I could tell it was the movie that Luca Guadagnino wanted to make. There you go. Yeah. So. I will, I will give it that, was that I was like, okay, you did the thing I think you were setting out to do. I had no interest in watching that thing. <laughs> um, Agree to disagree, I guess. Yes, yeah. but I mean, that's the, that's a difference in taste. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, what, did you ever watch the original one? I did not watch the, the okay. original. I did not I, watch I, the original. <laughs> I wonder which one you would say is better. I probably <laughs> would say the original was better. Um, I I don't know because not I, a lot. Part of, of me also thinks that in order to be a good remake, you should not have to see the original. Yeah, no, I I agree with that. Um, but I I still it stands that I think don't take really good movies and remake those. Those movies are those movies. You should take bad movies with that are like have something interesting, uh, and remake those so that you can like you know, give, give that story and those themes, like kind of what they deserve. I've got a counter to that, but I want to get to Josh and Trevor first. My final note is that, um, cause I was talking about it before the Mario RPG, which has a remake coming up. And what I said about it before is what I really appreciated about that game originally is it's unique artistic design. The remake has, have you guys seen the trailer? It just look. It's. I've it's, seen clips of the elephant. That's all I've seen. It's just an elephant. Whoa, Zowie! It's just generic Mario, and all all that gang. Uh, there's no grit and and texture. It's just rubbery, cartoonish, Mario, Peach, and Bowser, like you've seen in the uh, the movie and and like the the latest games. So, mm. don't don't do that. Would be mm. my. Uh, <laughs> Would have been my suggestion to them. All right, go I'll go ahead. I'm having a hard time narrowing mine down. So I'll thing. I'll go next. I'll, so my my first pick would have been Dune. 
So that I that I think it's that is such a rare and recent case where um it was a good movie. It was just a straight up good movie that was also a, a remake. The what one was that, your second yeah. choice, Suspiria? It was not. Oh, okay. I, I've never heard of that movie ever. <clears throat> um my my second one that I was thinking of, which kind of like I, I I don't know if this fits into the remake or the reboot, so we can we can discuss that. Sure. Is actually Italian Job. I That's love a remake. Italian Son of a job. bitch. Both Dune and Italian I, Job are on my list. That is a remake. But so it's a it. totally different story. Yeah, Michael like it doesn't Keaton, even take place. Yeah, and it the the original takes place in Italy, like like literally in Italy, where it's just the intro to the movie. I guess it would be a reboot, spiritual successor, but I mean, it was on my list too. I, it's a, it's a great take on it. So, what do you like so about that's, it? Well, I, I think it's just a fun movie, like all around. I think they, they it's a fun movie to watch. It's um, it fulfilled the the vision of stealing cars and the um, that I think the original couldn't quite pull off. Um, it's also just a better script. Being, uh, I've seen the original and it's it's pretty dry uh, and it's, some of the cuts are, are a little rough most realistic right, I've got, depiction I've got of hacking two I've things two things almost <laughs> happen I steal cars I do jujitsu that's Jason, Jason Statham. Statham that's a perfect impersonation you know you, my... feel free to cut it so, out <laughs> but I, I think so to me the concept of what constitutes doing a re remake is really interesting and I would say that definition is going to change because previously it was always about the original director didn't have the technology or the budget to fulfill their vision. And so or you possibly want to... the technical know-how I would say. Right? Or yeah. Or the aptitude or, or the just general yeah. skill sets. Or and it's so... just a story that people do a million times. Sure. There have been four little women adaptations. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> I, th I would have guessed more. And R Romeo and Juliet. And yeah, Romeo and Juliet's have, been done a million times. Versions of that. It's a Pride and Prejudice. Everyone loves Pride and Prejudice. A gazillion <laughs> of those, I'm sure. Yeah. But so, I mean, those those are aside, those aside, that's what I think of as a good remake is where, like, Dune's a perfect case. The, the previous, the original Dune was just greatly prohibited by the technology of the time. It was groundbreaking. I mean, don't get me wrong, for, for that time period. But I don't think the director got what they were looking for. And there was um, also the some director. It was the wrong director. It, it was kind of also in development hell, and there was a significant amount of studio meddling. So that was mm. part of the issue as well. Sure, that makes sense. But I, I, I genuinely like seeing when I, when I when I think of an older movie, I love seeing it re like reimagine using graphics and technology where I don't I don't have to um fill in the gaps of my imagination there, there's nothing left to the imagination i i definitely enjoy that when I, when I have that experience and it's brought to a modern big screen um and i think that's a lot of what i would say for kind of current day or the last 20 years but that's no longer the case like i look at lord of the rings and i don't think there's anything wrong with it it's it, sure, they've improved graphics since then, and things look more real. But there was nothing wrong with it. Like it, it captured the essence of what I think Peter Jackson wanted to do. Um, I'm sure there's some small cases where maybe he wanted to do more. But I just, I don't think more and more we're not going to have that scenario. Like we, we're not going to have the scenario where the technology wasn't there. The technology most likely was there. And so I think what, like you know, over the next, as we you know go into the future. To me, it's going to be less about the technology and more about an alternative artistic vision. Again, and I have I think... a couple that I want to bring up, but I want to get to everybody first. No, you can do that if you want before we get to me. Okay. Well, first, can I, so, I want to ask okay. Trevor. Go ahead. Go I want ahead. to ask Trevor first uh, if you could adapt like one 80s movie today, what would it be? And I'm assuming for you would be 80s. Maybe. Yeah, is it, you mean remake or something hasn't been made yet? Re no, what would you do? Like what movie? Like an eighties like? movie that could be remade with now technology of today, basically. Okay. Nothing like honestly, nothing standing out. Like part of the charm of the eighties movies is the 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 period. Eighties the movies. So there, yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing in particular that I would be overly um, keen to see remade. You know, I guess I guess I would say 
What um, about the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where he's like a gladiator? Conan? No, no, no. Like it's in the future. Oh, you mean um oh shoot, Running Man. Running <clears throat> Man. That might be 90s. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't think... I feel I feel like I don't feel like I don't trust that they would do it well. Because they've already done like <laughs> uh True Lies and that was terrible. Well, well we already true... Or recall. They did, we they already have recall. the best yeah. 80s remake that has ever been made and probably ever will be made. Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I was trying to describe it to somebody and someone said, you know, they were like, oh, you know, I didn't end up seeing it. I said, OK, imagine what you think Top Gun Maverick was. It was that. <laughs> like Patrick, everything you think it was. Yes. <laughs> like, yes, it was a sequel. But 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 in in a, in a way, it was also kind of a remake. You could see it without seeing the original. It'd be yeah. just fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, so I had a there, point about artistic vision. Yeah. So here's a remake that I didn't think need to, needed to exist until I saw it. Well, no, I take it back. Still didn't need to exist, but I appreciated why it existed. West Side Story, Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. To be honest, didn't need to exist. However, once I saw it, one of the things that I really appreciated about it was one, um, uh, actual Puerto Ricans played Puerto Ricans, so that was kind of nice. Um, instead of Natalie Wood and Brownface, but two, a lot of the movie was just in Spanish, like entire portions of the movie were just in Spanish with no subtitles. And I looked at it and I thought, you know. This is an interesting reason for this film to exist because it's it's an adaptation of a story from, you know, from 50 years ago. But the the creative choices of updating it, technologically, it's pretty much the same. Um, there's not really anything you couldn't do in the 60s that you could do in the 2020s. But there was a more artistic vision brought to it. It was updated when it came to storytelling, um, uh, storytelling uh, methods and also representation. And I sort of sat there and I thought, you know, again, it didn't need to be remade. No one was asking for it and no one went and saw it, um, even though it won a couple Oscars. But I appreciated why it existed and I did feel like I was like, no, that was a good remake. Um, I was like, this was a well done remake of a movie that probably didn't need to be remade, but it proved to me that it that its existence was deserved. I mean, to to be fair, I don't. No movie needs to be remade. You know, right? Like, if any movie is worth noting enough that you're that people are saying we could make money off of this, or enough people like this that we should remake it, that means the movie is already some probably beloved or liked or you know noteworthy. Except Suspiria. I mean, it's a it's a cult classic. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the future of remakes of things that don't make any sense. Not because I think they need them, like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. They already do Star Wars because it, because those movies will never never be replaced, and nor do they need to be replaced. They'll they'll, they'll always exist as in my memory as beloved. But I'm excited at the prospect to see someone else's artistic vision, and that will be a fun comparison yeah. to see. How did you imagine this world very, very differently? Um, and I imagine over the next 100, 200 years, they're just going to keep remaking them. And it's going to be like artists just painting the same painting over and over and over again using different styles. So I think that's, to me, what remakes are going to start to become. It's just an, someone else's art, alternate take on, on a medium. Well, there's a lot bif big difference between Leonardo da Vinci painting a beautiful woman and Pablo Picasso painting a beautiful woman. They're both beautiful yeah. women, but they're very different artistic pieces. Well, I mean, think about yeah. just like generic action movies. A lot of them are kind of the same thing, but if they're made uniquely by different cinematographers, different directors, you get different kinds of entertainment. Even though, you know, how many movies are there of some guy who knows how to use a gun in martial arts and is on a rampage of revenge? Like, it's been done. Oh, that sounds like times. a good movie. You should make that. But, <laughs> like, but like John Wick is a good example of the most bare bones. I've seen this a hundred times, but you haven't because it was done differently and uniquely. And, uh, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. On, on your point, Trevor, I think Godzilla is an interesting point because there's nothing, I mean, other than color, 
would be an obvious one. Like there's no I love other... the '90s Godzilla. I'm a big fan of '90s Godzilla. You are. The, the you are. You can't. Godzilla. Be. Yes. Yes. That was like an amazing movie. Isn't that next? Matt... Isn't that our next podcast? <laughs> I was gonna say though the original. 50 it was 50s right the first one that came out so the early uh, japanese godzilla there's kind of nothing that needed to be improved like it was the movie that it was trying to be and it nailed it um but like subsequent remakes not sequels but remakes have kind of a different point that they're trying to make i don't know of any that are doing that are like exactly a remake of the first godzilla where it's a one-to-one this is kind of about the idea of like you know uh, a nuclear bomb going off yeah godzilla is a is basically uh the japanese reconciling with the horrors of nuclear warfare the movie yeah but when the americans make it it's about cool monsters uh destroying a city and probably global warming or something uh shin godzilla though is really interesting because it's it's still about specifically like turmoil that happened in japan Mm. um and like thematically is about something and like i think is a much better remake than any of the americans ones just in the sense of like it is more respectful of like the source material in that sense it's interesting when you have cross-cultural um, remakes. Uh, sometimes they work. Sometimes they really blow it. Um, the Departed is an excellent example of a movie that I think did a good oh, job. I being that off my list now. It is a remake. Yeah. Oh, Josh, is Eternal, that your pick? Eternal Affairs was the original Departed. I, I never finished watching that, so I don't know. Well, Josh, go ahead and get to your point. Okay, I'm going to cross yes. off Dune, I'm going to cross off Italian Job, and I'm cross off The Departed, because I couldn't figure out what was... No, you can just cut out the... Go list. with what you want to go with. Okay, okay, so I'm going to... I got... I'm down to five. Man of Steel. Didn't... I would call it a reboot, but sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't... I mean, I didn't grow up on Superman with, with Reeves, so um, there's no nostalgia there. There's no, you know... I, I All I see is kind of a dated... A movie that needed updated effects and and the the acting was very early comic booky kind of cheesy and campy and all that um but i really liked man of steel um even though a lot of people seem to not have i i i was just so happy to see him punch zod and like there is actually action and fighting and everything i'm a fan yeah but I'm a fan i i think i think that does go into reboot a little bit too much um is mad max a sequel that's a sequel ah cross that off down the three, um, but that would be the, a good one. I mean, if you want to, but it's also the same director. The new oh, one is, really? is, yeah, the new one is kind of the so like the fourth one is kind of a remake of the second one, though. You didn't need to, see yeah, it kind of for that in order to really enjoy that one, I'd say. No, um, it's it's not really a sequel at all. I'm actually crossing off another one. I had Mario on here, but I don't think Mario. I put that one on because the first one sucked so bad, not because the new one was that good. I think the new one was perfectly adequate in what it needed to be, but it wasn't uh, some great, you know, like it was on there because the, uh, the first one was, was terrible. All right, I'm down to two. I'm going to use two. Uh, the Mummy. Not, That's a great one. Not oh, yeah. Tom Cruise. Although I think Tom Cruise's one was actually uh, unfairly criticized too much i didn't think it was that bad i thought but so too. the mummy with brendan Fraser is one of my favorites from a really old because that was that made is that's a great example a long long time ago I and i love the mummy at least the first i one. love the moment second first, one is a guilty pleasure third one is just sucks. whatever but yeah the first i could watch the mummy when it's on you know fx channel or whatever i totally throw that on it's so fun um and it just, maybe, that's sort of like an example of like you know how some people have said, like, the, out of the Disney remakes from the animated ones, Cinderella is one of the better ones because Cinderella was, like, so bare bones. There's a lot of structure to build upon rather than have to mess up the content that was there. Um, I think that's the same with The Mummy. The Mummy is so old that there wasn't really a whole lot uh, to mess up. You could There were so many ideas you could inject in there without screwing things up in, in a nostalgic way. And it's basically just Pirates of the Caribbean kind of adventure. Like, it's just... It's just all fun and goofy, and they had they had that sort of early Marvel 
campiness to it, but it was still really horrifying when all the guys are being hunted down by Emotep and they're like getting the lives oh. sucked out of them. Like, oh, so good. I never, never think, like, I never thought about that. Like, it was, it was a, a sort of a comedy with horror elements in a sense. Not comedy, but sort of like a schlocky go, yeah, go yeah. around, come get them. But there, it yeah. was horror. It was legitimate horror elements. Yeah, it. It, it was definitely scary, but it had the, the humor and, and, it had the swash, swashbuckling adventure and all yeah. that. Um, it was a really good homage to like old, older swashbuckling movies while doing like yeah. flat yes. out remake. More like not enough movies, I think, go for that tone. Uh, other than, of course, the masterpiece that is Sahara, which nailed yes. it. Yeah, Sahara is Sahara's basically the same kind of, you know, feel as that. Well, it's it's the model that it was the mummy was aspiring to be. Yeah, the, the f original mummy is so old that I don't even know what the plot was. I know more uh, about Abbott, Abbott and Costello, and Costello. And the mummy than the actual mummy. <laughs> but That's I mean, the... <laughs> ultimately, you know, it's a it is a story wherein the mummy is the bad guy, and so that, instead of yeah. doing sort of a schlocky, you know, monster movie kind of horror thing out of it, they decided to make it a swashbuckling adventure story that is kind of horror comedy cool i yeah. think that's that's like exactly what a remake should be is yeah you can do something that wasn't done before and that can be a satisfying and fun movie all in its own right Here's and a running, it's running also great time, but the the uh, honorable mention i was going to say was planet of the apes i think that also did it quite well um which, which one <laughs> well it's a trilogy right uh the matt reeves not 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 was it tim burton it was okay i think it was yeah not, not, not i'm burton. not talking about that one but i'm talking about the one after that the andy circus planet of the andy circus involved i thought that one was that's also a good that's yeah. the two i i gotta throw it out there as honorable mention because i didn't want to say it in case i took it from you josh but yep. oceans 11 i think that's a good reboot that's, or a, remake. Re that's a reboot Yep. That's a remake. Ah, that falls into the category. The, I had no idea. The original version of Ocean's Eleven was Frank Sinatra and all of his friends being misogynistic and <laughs> drinking in Las Vegas. <laughs> and uh, it's whereas, boring. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really just, eh, we're the Rat Pack and we're cool. Uh, a, a Fistful of Dollars is a rare remake that I think is a really good remake, but also not as good as the the original. Yeah, it's another cross-cultural one that works. It um, works very well, but I think uh, would be a Yo, Yo, one that does not work. Yo no. Jimbo is like a perfect movie, so it's um, like you can't adapt, no matter how good the adaptation is. I think Departed worked as a cross cultural one because it sort of it rather than trying to to make it about Hong Kong, it's like no, we just made we did kind of the same plot line, only we did Boston politics and we did Two moles after each other kind of thing. That it was the same, it was the same plot, but it was adapted to sort of the very irish boston situation um that was you know scorsese's wheelhouse i think that's why it worked cross-culturally um mm -hmm. i tend to think if you try to do if you try to just do the same culture only you know if like then you get areas where you're like um when you're doing old well i didn't I haven't seen old boy but um like ghost in the shell was not a very good adaptation partly because it was like oh, trying yeah. to take it out oh, of any the of japanese the... context yeah. Any of the American adaptations of an anime are another bad. one that was really I, I terrible. I can't think of a good example. Cowboy Bebop even was like, I kind of enjoyed the Netflix show. Avatar. But it's, it's so bad. That's not an anime. That was the that's last an, Airbender. That's American. Yeah, it's well, American show. Strictly speaking, but I mean, yeah, it was still a terrible it, adaptation. But it's not. Yeah, it's it's not cross cultural. Uh, right. Right. The another one that was terrible was um the V for Vendetta movie tried to make a story that is very much about 1980s British politics, about 2000s American politics, yeah. and failed miserably. Uh, because while there were some similarities, it, it, it was it was a it was a, a story that was very much about Margaret Thatcher um, and not about George W. Bush. And trying to make it into the other didn't work very well. I also don't think it was as much about karate as the movie was. That too. Oh, maybe okay, maybe. We, we're we're running really late on time, okay, but I okay, did well, want to mention yeah. my last point was uh, if I didn't go first and say Dune, I was going to say True Grit. Ah, that's a good, uh, one. That's a good and one. True Grit didn't need to exist. No one needed to adapt it. I don't know, dude. But if you're going to be 
if you're gonna adapt a beloved movie, do it as well as the Coen brothers. <laughs> that, That's that is my only one. Movie. I gotta point out that is another one. It's an adaptation of a book. So true. They, they, and it's a better adaptation of the book than the first movie. Also true. Uh, and, and it's fantastic. It's I do not have movies. nostalgia for John Wayne, um, which I know a lot of people do. But, um, oh man, just the, the way the way the Coens write and the way they adapt Portis's novel is just music to my ears. They nailed it. They nailed it. Yep. it was a good All movie. right. We'll end there. Um, anyone who's watching, feel free to comment uh, about your choice of remakes or what you thought, thought about our choices of remakes. Um, also, you can send in uh, topic suggestions for future episodes uh, in the comments uh, below or send them to the Josh Dixon show at gmail.com. Until next time, we will see you later. <laughs>